Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a Guild Wars EX Plus guide for the upcoming Win GW Magna version. I don't know if I'm going to do Zeph. I have to finish the Sky Ace and uh, bars ain't dropping like I would like they to. So, oh well, um, it may, it'll come when it comes. But today's video is going to be strictly Magna and it's going to be involving not a lot of win house because I know a lot of people who are either returning players, new players, they don't got the weapon. And I know you guys are like, oh, another win house video. So this video only has one win house and you don't even, you don't need it, but it helps a ton. And that's because it's running no CFA 5 star. Another character people are probably tired of seeing is that CFA 5 star, probably a character you don't have, right? So. This video, it's like half no CFA 5 star and majority of it has no win house. So don't expect every setup to be two buttons because keep it real with you, you're really not going to have, you're not going to have two buttons without CFA 5 star or win house. This is how it's going to happen. It's really hard to hit it without both, right? One of them, okay, sure, you can do it, but without both, you're, you're pushing it. You're really pushing it. But with that, let's talk about the setups here. One thing that you're going to need though, and it's kind of major, and it's something you guys probably don't want to hear about it. It's an Opus Ultra Limit Break. I know, I know. Not the easiest thing to get, right? <laughs> this is probably the biggest gate to a lot of players, you know. Clearing FOD, even though it's not that hard, I carry people on my stream like daily. So if you guys need help, I, I, I don't mind killing pe for people, but uh, yeah, this is probably the biggest gate for people, and honestly, without it, you ain't doing the same amount of damage, so you may well not even try. You're going to have to hit an extra button, because the amount of raw damage that the Opus Ultra Limit Break-In, 5-star, whatever you want to call it, gives is massive, therefore, you need it. You, you cannot, this, you're not going to do the same amount of damage without it. You need it, so... It's unfortunate people may be mad about that but reality is that it's not that hard to get now um maybe a year ago it was harder but not right now it's just the hardest part is getting the gold bar honestly in my opinion that one i can understand but this clearing a raid is not that hard anymore uh the grid five harps i know little tip here is that you don't need five harps you can have to get a, you can get away with four harps i've done it um four harps in the one non full limit break harp okay four harps in one non full limit break harp so it's four and one and the the one could be this is basic uh skill level 10 weapon it's fine however i will recommend that if you're going to go that route you will have to have your characters have good emps and a good rank generally ca damage rank um uh, ca cap depending on the character but you will need a really good CA damage ring to make up for the damage loss of not having five full limit break harps. With one not being full limit break, you do have a little bit less damage. Other than that, covers about it. Uh, mechanic build is generally the same. The only difference is the mechanic you run three harps instead of the five with how long, because you're running double T mot with mechanic. But I have each setup so the grid and stuff, so you can figure out what's which what? EMP is also very important on your main character. These setups are all min max, and you need the correct EMPs to hit the highest threshold. Unfortunately, that means you're gonna be a high rank. If you're not a high rank, your main character will have less damage cap, mainly the skill damage cap and the chain burst damage cap. These matter big time. So if you're not a high rank, you're not gonna hit it. Therefore, you may have to hit an extra button. If you have Raphael though, you can probably uh get away without doing that but just keep that in mind another thing to mention is the champion class weapons there's two of them you're going to need one is the one for chrysor emblem is going to be delvery delvery is very very good because it gives you a ton of bonus damage on your main character every time they ogi and they ogi twice therefore it's like a free two two million 2.5 it's really great and i recommend this for people who are struggling to get the OTK done. If you don't struggle, then you don't need it, right? There's plenty of double win house OTKs where you do not need this weapon. 
However, if you're a little bit weaker, you're probably going to need it. And the second class weapon you're going to end up needing is the Kango class weapon. This is for my no win house boys. If you ain't got a win house, this is what you're going to be looking at right now. Reason being that it does give the 10% boost to all allies charge bar. If you didn't know, your main character starts off with 60% charge bar, dual arts and iron flow puts you to 100. Your third, your second unit will be a eternal, generally Siete or Neo. They will start with 70. Two Ogies from your main character is 90 on them. So they need 10% charge bar to hit that 100% threshold. And that's the point of this weapon. The same thing with the wind house, just that the wind house also has a better modifier because an EX weapon, this is not, it has no modifier, unfortunately, therefore it's just pure stats. That's the difference between both weapons. Not to mention that the wind house had the better OG effect being CA damage specs. So it's unfortunate, but the weapons are not bad. It has a lot of damage lacking. Therefore you need to be stronger to really utilize this weapon. If you are a weak player, Unfortunately, this weapon probably won't do you much because you won't hit the threshold. Luckily though, one thing I will mention is that you do not need any emblems for it. So hey, you can skip out on Akasha for now. Think of, think of the positives, right? Raphael, recommend being completely done. Uh, the Seraphic weapon. So, skill level 15 and everything. And now we're on the summons, right? So judgment is the most important most of these videos, besides the one of them, all run, well, well, all these videos require judgment uh, fully completed, which is full limit break. Ultra limit broken, which is five star, not that important. It does give you more stats, but at the very minimum, you will need it to be full limit broken, therefore completely done. Probably hard for people, but it's not as hard as it used to be. We do have a rerun coming up, so you can put your efforts from that rerun, the 30k um, arc run points towards completing your judgment if you want to have an easier GW experience. Raphael, not required. He's only used in one very, very niche two button min max no win house. It's extremely min max and you require Raphael. However, besides that niche kill, you don't need him. So, luckily, that's good. And the rest of it is all free to play summons. So you can just run any of your Arc Room summons that you completed fully in the grid because they have decent stats. If you have Bahamut, that's even better. Throw a Bahamut, Lucifer in there, a Primal Four Star, whatever you got to do to get your stats as high as possible. But luckily, Raphael is only really used in one very, very nice setup. And other than that, uh, we're going to be looking at a bunch of characters here. We're going to have Neo, Lyra, Vera, Siete, um, Mirren, all of them. So there's a lot of characters, a lot of EMPs. Each EMP will be shown at, I will recommend most of your characters have CA damage over CA damage cap because this grid is generally weaker. A lot of your characters will not be capping. Even Siete does not cap. So, you know, it's a lot. You, you do need CA damage as it helps quite a bit for a lot of these characters. So that's one thing I recommend you. If you don't have good ranks, get to farming um, Grand Order. Uh, what's the other raid called? <laughs> I don't remember it. Akasha. Because you need good ranks for these characters to really cut buttons in time when it comes to farming EX+. But some people may not care about that and they want to do a 10 button setup for EX+. That's okay. So my tip to you guys. I think that's coverage about everything. Back row does not matter in any of these videos. So you can put anyone you want in the back row. Uh, one last thing before I mention, before I leave, these videos were, will require you to have your wind ship on. So you'll need your crew buff to be 10% and you will need to be on a wind ship. You go to airship here and look at the elements. I recommend your wind ship be level 10%, uh, which is completely max, level 9. Um, currently, the ship I'm on is only level 8 because I'm too lazy to uh, finish the level 9. It's a solo ship, mainly used for like whenever I leave crew. Uh, it, it takes a lot of grails, and I need grails right now, so it's not level, it's not completely done. But I, you, you're going to need this. The damage buff without it is really bad, so 
I'll recommend whenever you get ready for Guild Wars and you're testing your setups to swamp over to this type of ship here and to turn on your win attack boost because it helps a ton in this. Now that covers everything. Thank you guys for watching. I will mention the last thing here is that I will be doing Proud Plus for the Fire Great Wall thing on release for Magna and Primal. I've just completed Magna Grid, so I'm ready to do both on release. So should be fun. I'll be streaming it on my Twitch channel. I will not be streaming it on YouTube. So if you guys want to come see that, it'll be on Twitch. And that covers everything. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later, guys. この服を汚せばこの程度です。